Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the nation's electoral umpire, the Independent National Electoral Commission, says it will not release the election timetable until the Election Act Electoral Act Amendment Bill is signed into law. What is the implication of this decision? The pyramids are back. This time, not granite pyramids, but rice pyramids. President Mohammed Buhari yesterday unveiled what is said to be the world's largest rice pyramid. Better days ahead for the agricultural sector. We take an in-depth look at these on the program. And as usual, we dive into the headlines from the nation's national dailies on The Breakfast. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a great day and uh, we're going to be having a great time on the show. I am Messi Bopo. And I'm Kofi Batels. We start off with our top trending stories. Messi, interesting uh, news coming as far as qualifications for uh, the leading positions in Nigeria polity is concerned. Of course, and that's because you have the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, uh, Femi Baja Biamila, raising the concerns that the National Assembly should pay attention into uh, reviewing the Constitution to amend it to ensure that we have an upward review for qualification. It might also interest you to know that the qualification currently, uh, I think it's at uh, the SSC School, set. school yes. Certificate, <laughs> as it's been called. Yes. But yes. Uh, this is, you know, one concern. And I remember at the time in 2019, uh, where the 2019 election where the con part of the constitution was amended yes. to allow young people to actually you know contest for that election mm -hmm. but there are a lot of reactions that have generated or that have been generated following uh, this school of thought and the question is will that enhance performance would that bring about good governance would that solve the security concerns whether or not a person has a high educational qualification does that translate into having good policies and what have you. But um, I think it's a two-way thing. So it's not a criteria to become a good president or to become uh, you know, a better governor, but it's also necessary you know, to have uh, all of that education and information, especially for a climb like Nigeria with diverse consents and trying also to imbibe, you know, the so, new... So, Mr. So, <laughs> what are you saying? Because it sounds like you're giving this... So you, you, you're making a case for... For this change, is that what you're saying? You know, uh... So I'm making a case, and I'm also not making a case for it. I'm for mm -hmm. it. I'm also saying that as much as that's very, yeah. um, that's yeah. a good one, yeah. but it's not necessary. I mean, it's not the criteria. Like mm -hmm. we, we we talked about it yesterday, mm -hmm. we have seen professors who are governors. You know, we have seen academics, mm -hmm. and nothing to show for at the end of the day, eight years and counting. And so, what is the? Um, does that really mean that if someone have a, a particular qualification, uh, would that really make them a good governor or a good president? Will that translate into um, standard of living of the people? So this question, quite that's, dicey. That's, that's a very, 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 very uh, important uh, question to ask. You know, lots of Nigerians looking at the pros and cons. You know, educational qualifications for political leaders, especially those who are occupying the number one position in the country, usually um, a, a, a subject of... Um, uh, debate. I mean, it's not just with Nigeria. Uh, you go back all the way to the United States of America, it's been an issue. And I'm sure the other countries we can point out that have had issues like this. But in Nigeria, um, the academic qualifications of the current president have been called into question uh, uh, before. And they, therefore, you have you know supporters of the different political parties taking sides on this, and it's evident in the discourse online. Like you've said, there, there are um, pros and cons of such a move. Um, of course, uh, you look at the fact that the constitution is constitution, it has to be amended. Um, the Electoral Act also uh, needs to be looked at before um, such a move is, 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 is implemented. But, but, but maybe, maybe, maybe those who are going for this don't want anyone to be excluded from the process and, and to give them the chance, the opportunity you know, to, to contest. 
No, so I, I don't think that that might be the case. You know, so I'm going to make reference to that 2019 where the not too young to run bill was actually introduced. I mean, so just a uh, you know, few times before the election and then you had that bill. So how many young persons did we have? Because you're looking at the time. The time is very slim. You have to talk about prepar preparations. Elections are not just that. Uh, you don't wake up in the morning and say you want to become a governor or president. You must or have look been working before So you now probably would have had yeah. all of your strategies. So if you don't have these laws already in place, if you don't have the the backings of the law very early existing enough time so the people can actually prepare so because you are meant a particular um, you know section now so let's even assume that um, we now say okay uh, if you have the BSc and then just how many more days somebody wakes up and says, okay now that we have uh, the you know qualification is up so I can actually buy for it PhD holders yeah. and masters and so what is the time frame now so I'm thinking that we shouldn't always wait for it is very brilliant but we don't have to wait for almost an election year uh, you know, more like the eve of election absolutely, before we begin absolutely. To make, uh, you know you know you know for, for instance yesterday you know um, um, we heard that INEC uh, uh, um, will not be be releasing the electoral, like we just said, to the electoral timetable until the share of the electoral act amendment bill being passed. These are things that they need to be planned well. The, the logistics and the, the planning that goes into uh, an election is it, quite huge, it's quite large. You know, I, I was listening to Celine Dion. Sorry, someone will be asking what's the different or relationship between Celine Dion and the election. Oh, okay. yeah, but, but she cancelled her, her, her tour. You know, she's meant to perform in some parts of she, the world. She cancelled the tour. Why? She said because of health reasons. And she apologized to her fans. Why did Celine Dion apologize to her fans? Because she says that they had they had bought tickets and all that. And she says the planning it takes into uh, it, that goes into um, the work that goes into planning a concert, you know, is a lot. So I said to myself, um, if if a musician if a musician does a lot of detailed planning for just one concert, you know, how much more an election? A lot of planning goes into the election. So it's, it's going to be tough to see how this plays out, you know, like you said. It's going to be tough. But then again, you know, some people have also asked, I've looked at some of the comments online. Some have asked them, what's the value of a uh, university degree in the country today? What do people need to go to to get the degree? Um, do you meet uh, graduates who make you go, huh, is this one a graduate? What is the quality of the education we have in the country today? You know, that, that makes you meet someone who is a university graduate or master's degree holder. And then you say, yes, this person is, is teaching me something. And this is what people online were saying. I was, I was finding it interesting, some of the comments. That, that having a degree in the country today doesn't necessarily mean that you put in the work. You know, with all the strikes that have been going on and all that, um, we need to look at the quality of education and, 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 and learning we have. And, and then we also need to pay attention to the fact that the world is evolving. I mean, things are changing. There are a lot of dynamics, and so we need to catch up with all of this. So uh, 20 years ago, things uh, were quite different. I mean, the analysis and, uh, you know, the way we look at things. So it is important that we evolve. As much as it sounds very brilliant, I'm also thinking that we should also encourage, you know, vocational training and what have you fantastic, because we've actually fantastic. paid attention to yes. uh, you know the, the conventional mm -hmm. institution and mm -hmm. so we constantly pay attention to it the world is moving away these days people are looking for who can solve problems problem solvers and not necessarily because we go to school and we'll be taught theories and at the yeah. end of the day you come out you're faced with real life challenge yeah. how do you handle all of this and this is the reason why you see a lot of people sometimes um, you know commit suicide because we, ha we haven't been taught that failure is part of life. Uh, so it's something maybe we need to include. So there are a lot of things. It goes beyond just having, um, you know, academic yes. qualification yes, and, and, and yes, all indeed. of that. Well, moving on, the federal government on Monday filed uh, a fresh terrorism charges against the embattled leader um, of the indigenous proscribed indigenous people of Biafra group Namdi Kano in the amended processes filed uh, before the federal high court sitting in Abuja. The government increased the counts in the initial charge it preferred against him, a Kano who has been in detention uh, since alleged abduction from Kenya, so we'll say repatriation and return to Nigeria, faced as tr seven treasonable uh, felony charges, mercy. Um, but now he's been, he was expected to enter a fresh plea uh, to or respond to the charges of uh, 15 amendment charges um, against him. 
Um, the charges were amended, like we said yesterday, discussed yesterday in the news headlines. Barely 24 hours to uh, the scheduled commencement of the hearing by trial justice Bin Tanyaku. Um, and of course, we also got to learn yesterday that um, a new member of Kanu's team, legal team, had emerged in the person of Michael Zekome. Um, he is now the lead counsel to uh, Kanu in this case. Of course, uh, AG4 is still there, AG4 is still there, but Ozekome now takes the lead. Um, uh, Michael Ozekome complained after, uh, uh, during the trial, that his client was still being subjected to poor treatment in DSS custody. Um, he said that Kanu was still being kept in solitary confinement and that any other detainee who greeted him was also kept in solitary confinement. And this is not the first time we're hearing this, you know. Um, and shortly before I joined the matter, because of course it's going to be really impossible for Kanu to enter a, a plea to something, uh, charges that just came up barely 24 hours to his appearance in court. And um, before um, adjourning the matter, the, the trial just, justice, judge Justice Bintayaku reminded the defendants that uh, a, a, a defense detention facility was not a five-star hotel. She had to say to Kanu, a detention facility is not a five-star hotel. I mean, that, that, was, that was really dramatic. But she, however, reiterated a previous order to the DSS, in whose detention he is, that the IPOB leader should be allowed the maximum comfort possible. I mean, how does that sound? <laughs> the mass one can't, can't, can't for possible. Now, if you check out what he wore yesterday, it's still the same outfit that he was captured in, or he was arrested in and brought back to Nigeria as far back as June 2021. And, and the trial judge was livid. She was upset and not happy that he was wearing the same Fendi outfit. So she said, uh, you know, that she says, and I quote, I don't want to see him in these clothes again. This is, this one is almost off-white, is what the, the judge said. Also, make sure that you allow him exercise. So it's been quite a very, very touchy issue online uh, in, and on air with Love Nigeria's reaction to this. So um, for me, my concern is why would the Office of the Attorney General, I mean, after two years or thereabout, just all of a sudden increase the charges? As much as I would agree that, you know, it's a yes, that they, yeah. they do have a right to increase or reduce charges, mm -hmm. that is it. But it has taken, I mean, that's a lot of time. So what happens to the proof of evidence before you get a case to court? So you probably, I mean, the fact that the case in court is that you have established all of the evidence and so therefore you can continue. So all of a sudden you wake up and then there are new charges. Where are these charges coming from? Because we cannot talk about the merit of the case. That's, you know, totally on, you know, the off law, the books, yeah. uh, you know, off yeah. the books. Yeah. But look at some of these issues. So it's a concern. Now, if you remember vividly in November, I remember the time where the president said he was going to have meeting with the Ohanes and Digbos and some of the elders and said there was a possibility of yeah. him granting amnesty. Or a political solution. Yes. And he said there was a, po yes, because I think that if the president had said he was going to grant Namdi Kanu, you know, or what's it called, amnesty. Nigerians wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be surprising. Mm. But this is very shocking that, so in November, this happened in November, and what, what are we again? We're in yeah, January. January. So he, he granted just a, a few. Yes, yes he, he, sorry to interrupt you. Well, he granted an interview uh, um, a couple of weeks ago, that famous interview at a TV station, um, and uh, where he said, with a media house, sorry, where he said, you know what, uh, he kind of should defend himself in court. His, the government will not release him. You know, and, and so people like you said are asking, you know, you, you've been given uh, 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 sort of a feeling, even your words, that there could be a possibility, mm. especially with the, uh, like you said, Attorney General and Minister of Justice saying that the federal government explored the possibilities. But, but uh, some, some pundits said that maybe Nigerians are rushing to conclusion regarding that statement. No, it's, because, it's, because not, it was, that the, it's not that the, it's not that the president categorically said he was yes, going to yes, grant yes, an yes, amnesty. Yes. But I mean, the fact that he said yeah, he was a going possibility. to... Yeah, there's a possibility. And of course, he met, you know, with these leaders. And then he had agreed to the fact that uh, he was going to meet with yeah, them just for, you know, yeah. peace and what have you. So shortly after, three months after they're about, then we have new charges. I mean, it calls for a lot of concern. As much as we Absolutely. will continue, I agree uh, it's okay to say that, yes, they do have a right to increase the charges or reduce the charges, however. But we're saying that after how many times? He was first arraigned in, uh, do you know, 20, 2021. 2021? Yeah. I'm, I'm not... Yes, yes. He yes. was captured in July 2021 and taken... The very court. first time he yes. was arraigned. Yes, but, but I mean, his lawyer, Michael Zekome, still echoed some of the things we said here yesterday. And so I, I guess that, you know, um, though the, I guess on the, uh, of the press was saying, you know what, it's still part of uh, the, the practice in law. I think they call it the Crimin Administration of Criminal Justice no, Act. No, but, but... You can, you can do that. You no, can. you can do that. But, but you're but, also but, asking that if you... I mean, you t for the fact that you're in court, you means you have proof of evidence. I mean, yes, yes. that's why you're in court already. So 
So at what point do you now have new charges? Um, if we have, if we're in a system where the legal, uh, the, the judicial system or the legal system uh, is, is, is very functional, mm -hmm. you know that this case would have been done, we would have been done with this case by this time. So, 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 so the, it's the, taken... Yes, the, the words of, of Michael Zekume, his legal counselor, are very, very in, in also instructive and even support what you're saying uh, because he said that the last agenda date was, was in, in December, uh, which is uh, November, I think, which is barely one month away from us. Uh, they had about one and a half months, basically, to to amend the charges against him and increase accounts from 7 to 15. Um, but they did that barely 24 hours to the trial, like you said. And he was asking, uh, when or what time are we going to have to meet a client for him to go through um, these new charges to, to, to decide whether what kind of plea to enter, you understand? What kind of plea to enter? You know, guilty or not guilty? And is it that we're going to come to court and we see our client and say, ah, ah, Mr. Kano, hi, I'm sinking for the first time. And we're going to show him, okay, this is what I got yesterday night. Look at the new charges. Are he guilty or not? We have to prepare defense. And, and, and so it, it's, he said, he used the word delay tactics, that these are delay tactics being employed by mm. the federal government. Yeah, so uh, apart from that also, I, I would just probably just, you know, brush on that particular one. Mm. The issue of security presence. It's a public trial. And the fact that people are not even allowed to go in. It's not a secret tire. Uh, it calls for another consent. And the fact that it just shows you uh, where the judge said of, of, uh, the, the correctional center. It's a correctional center, by the way. Mm. And if that's a correctional center, it just shows you the state of our prisons mm. and how people are being treated. Whether or yeah. not you are, uh, mm. you know, you're a, a, a special. I don't know if there's any VIP. Yeah. You know, in the he, 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 but I'm just saying that yeah. it goes to show you the state, you know, of, the state of our. He, he's even, he's even a bit better off. You look at him because he's he's with DSS right now, um, but 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 of course you never can tell. You know, uh, solitary confinement. Prison but but we, we'll move on. Um, um, uh, we yes, there's some issue with 5G and aviation. Um, uh, of course, the global aviation industry is said to be facing a, a catastrophic um, uh, disruption from the rollout of the 5G network service this week, uh, according to the leaders of major airlines uh, in the world. Um, they had to write a letter to the United States Transport and Economic Officials um, saying that uh, the launch of this long-awaited, long-expected and anticipated 5G technology could ground flights and leave tens of thousands of uh, people uh, uh, and even possibly millions around the world uh, stranded. You know, so th this is quite surprising because, you know, we've been looking forward to this 5G technology and how it's going to make life easier. Some people have said it's the f best thing since uh, sliced bread. And now the airlines <laughs> are coming out to say that um, if the technology goes ahead, we may not be able to fly. Well, um, so for me, you know that with uh, the third generation net, uh, mobile network and what have you, the fourth generation, there's been a lot of conspiracy theory as regards that. At the time, uh, the 3G network, we had some people saying, oh, it was the reason why we had, uh, is it the flu at the time or SARS? Mm -hmm. You know, the, mm -hmm. the virus at that time. No, all sorts of things. Are we <laughs> and here? So, yes, when the four, uh, you know, you also had the fourth generation network. Yeah. There was also another one associated with the swine flu. Oh. And so if you begin to look at the times, even, you know, with the fifth generation network people mm -hmm. say okay so they have decided to associate this with uh, um, all of the viruses and diseases and they say okay this is the reason why we're having all of this outbreak including the 5g network we've had Almighty that coronavirus 5G. yes as we well. couldn't sleep about <laughs> exactly so i i, oh I just want to believe that you know this has been scientifically proven because all of those all those uh, you know thoughts and uh, what have you uh, postulations have not been uh, you know, science have come out to say that this is not actually it. So I just also want to believe that this is not another uh, conspiracy theory. Has that been proven by science? Because that's, that, yeah. that's, that's yes. what you want to say. So as much as we know that, point. you know, the aviation sector yeah. has raised a concern, mm -hmm. but we should be able to find out if, you know, that's really the case. Yeah, fantastic. I, th I think that that's very important for us to, to find out, you know. But, but I, I think, you know, the difference between what we're seeing now and uh, what we saw with, with, with 5G, 4G, and 3G um, will be that this is coming from the scientists. 
you know, not from the people who are seeing the cables being rolled in the background in the mass and saying, why are they doing this even though there's a lockdown? You know, it's not coming from the preachers, you know, you know, because it's all a lot of messages where uh, preachers are saying, that, you know, some conspiracy and all that. But um, we have those cables being laid in Lagos as well. I've seen some of them being laid around. And we, we're told that the 5G will bring very fast, ultra fast is the word they use, internet speed, uh, extra bandwidth and increased connectivity. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. But, but well... Um, science versus science. Let's see what happens at the end of the day because we don't want to be flying and hearing that because of 5G is a bit an air crash and all that. We don't want to have that. Anyway, <laughs> interesting times we live in. <laughs> interesting times in days. Indeed. Well, we'll step on the brakes right now and when we return, we will be looking at the papers. We call it Off the Press. We'll be right back. <laughs>